You didn't think you didn't you didn't think I'd make it, did I? Did you? It's just us, Kathy. Oh, hey, Keith. <laughs> What's weird? The the count over here says zero. Bob, Lee, Jim. There we go. It's catching up now. Let's go. Yeah, it's not gray here. It's very, very sunny. Uh, 91 today, I think, is what we're going to get. So we're, Beth and I got our uh, 10,000 steps in early today so we could, and I have to head to church in a little bit. We're going to film two weekends today. Um, hopefully it won't take too long. What's the weather going to be here? It says 91 high. Right now it's 79. Sunny. And then we're going to be more in the 80s next weekend and back into the 90s. So not bad. It's as long as it stays cool at night, the house can cool down. It's great. Um, and so I think what I'm going to do starting tomorrow, we're going to uh change because I kind of feel like I'm, I've got you've got a, tons to work on here with the finger picking stuff. I don't want to I want to discourage you. And then the next direction on the on the Travis stuff is really. It, it, you'll almost discover things by accident as you start messing around with chords. Um, but also, um, you know, th then it starts to get into coordinating your right and left hand. And we're get we're going to get way out of the beginner range. Um, and I feel like the, the, the beginner, maybe later beginner range is what serves everybody best at this point. Um, so, and everybody take a sip cause I touched my face. Cheers. I can't believe I went on a 10,000 walk step, <laughs> a 10,000 walk step, went on a 10,000 walk step and I still have half my coffee left. Um, so, and uh, where's my light? Here it is. Just in case I need this. I got it right here. Feels like it's kind of dark in here. So I'm going to go ahead and see how my battery is. Oh, good. It's good. So I'll just do this. And now you can see my hand better. It's like a movie. <laughs> Hopefully. How's the streaming? I didn't check the... the um... So what I'm going to... What we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the blues. We're going to do basic blues stuff. So I'm going to show you, um, we're going to practice playing the blues, prog a blues progression, maybe a couple different ones. Um, and we're going to learn to solo a little bit. So what, what I'm going to do is we're, I guess, there's going to be a point where I'm just going to be playing this and you're going to be you're going to be doing exactly that. Uh, but you, the, so we'll start that tomorrow, I think. And um, and we'll start out by just really, really working hard on the hard part about the blues. And we'll talk about it tomorrow. But one of the things is it's a, blues is generally a 12 bar phrase. And uh, so often people make it a 10 bar phrase. And because you start out, maybe you might the most simplest blues might be just like four bars of the one chord and then two bars of the four chord and then two two bars of the one chord and two bars of the five chord and then two more bars of the one chord at the end. And so you got two bars of the one chord at the end and then four at the top. So you're like thinking as soon as you start playing those that one chord again, you think you're back at the top, but you're not. You've got two more bars. In there. So we're going to practice that. You're going to play along with me and we're going to probably what's called wood shedding. Um, I'm not sure where that came from. I know Charlie Parker used to talk about it, uh, the sax player. He would 
they called it woodshedding, where you would just basically go out in the woodshed and practice. I mean, I think the reason they went out to a woodshed was because they were playing saxophone and it was noisy and you were bugging people. So you would find a woodshed somewhere, I guess, and practice. Charlie Parker would actually go off on the Brooklyn Bridge and just walk out there and practice late at night because, you know, saxophone in, in downtown New York in Manhattan was going to be kind of annoying at night. So in your apartment. So he was a very considerate person. Dang it. I got a hair on my face or something. I got a lot of hair on my face. Okay. Um, so, but to, to reiterate what we were working on with the, the finger picking stuff, um, basically with, with the, um, uh, the Travis pattern or the Travis style applied to um, Dust in the Wind. So it would be thumb, so playing the middle four strings, thumb and second finger pinch, then thumb first, thumb second, thumb first. And when you pinch, there's a pause. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two and three and four and okay so the thumb is playing two strings i used to teach it this way where i would do it with three fingers so it'd be thumb and third finger and then first uh sorry first second thumb third first second so let me see if i can print up a very large tab notation let me see if i can do that and if i can uh then i'll write it out really big with both fingering so you can see that okay um uh, go to this this is a, like I said, i've said i've shared this with you before this is my favorite uh blank sheet music.com or dot net sorry copy so i'm going to this site right here bookmark that for later uh the tab is it this is tab here and i want to Make it bigger, bigger, bigger. Ooh, I can make it really big. Okay, let me see what this looks like. Oh, dang. Okay, this is nice. Really big tab. <laughs> Speaking of tab, I grew up in a home with, when my parents got divorced, it was just my mom and my sisters and me. So I grew, grew up in a home of, of women who were constantly on diets. And... Uh, so here's the, and the diet soda at the time, I, Diet Coke didn't exist. It was Tab. Diet Pepsi didn't exist. Tab. Tab is the nastiest. And so that's what I drank. That's all we had in the house. So that, as far as soda goes. So anytime I had soda in Indiana, it was like Tab. And, uh, uh, and so, um, oh, you're out of water. Go get more, Bonnie. Oh, yeah, my water's over there. Um and uh, so when I got to Diet Coke, Diet Coke tasted amazing compared to Tab. So let's see. I think I will still use number one here. All right. So the this is the Travis. And then this would be more like the Giuliani. Probably two L's. I don't know. Uh, so there's basically thumb, one, thumb two, thumb, one. Okay. And um, let's see. And then when you play it more like I, how I taught it for years. And the rhythm on this is quarter note. Like that. And just as a, a a little musical music notation note. You'll notice that I wrote a chord. These are just this, these are like nondescript rhythmic notation here at the bottom. It's the same. It's the one, two, and three, and four end. The I live in Indiana. You notice I use a quarter note, and notice it's not a note. It's just like a slash. And then I did two eighth notes that I tied together, then four eighth notes that I tied together. So when you have four eighth notes in a row on beats three and four or beats one and two, you can tie them together. I would not tie all of these together. That doesn't look clean, but you can clearly see one, two, three, four kind of go by. So here you'll notice the Travis version is the thumb is playing two strings, the fifth string and the fourth string. 
So this doesn't have to do with frets or anything. This is just have to do with what finger is going to be plucking which string. Okay. And then here in the Giuliani version, we're plucking instead of the thumb and second finger together, we're plucking the thumb and third finger together. And then instead of it being the thumb and first doing the middle two strings, we're doing the first and second finger doing the middle two strings. So in other words, this one does not have the bouncing thumb. The thumb is not doing as much work on this one um, as this one. However, this one doesn't utilize the third finger. So do they sound different? They can. Uh, they can sound a little different. Having your thumb hit the string instead of your first finger, I think definitely is a different tone. It's very, very subtle. Um, what did they use? They probably used this. But I taught it this way for years and years and years. Um, never saw a video of them actually playing it. And then I realized, oh, wait, it is a Travis pattern. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's see. I, yeah, tab is the worst. It's just tab, tab, and not tab, <laughs> this tab, but tab the drink. Uh, let's see. Oh, Hook can play anytime he wants. He lives on a big lot. Well, I can do that now too, which is, well, I've always been able to do that, but uh, you can always play with your amp, I mean, with an electric guitar not plugged in. Um, that's the beauty of a guitar. You can kind of, even acoustic guitar, nylon guitar is not that loud. And they do have dampers for those you can get. So if you live in an apartment building, you can you can turn on the damper or put a damper on it and it'll it'll be quiet. You can also cover up the sound hole, which will make it quieter. Okay. So again, the the uh Travis pattern, I'm grabbing the fifth string and the second string with the thumb and second finger. And then I'm answering thumb index, thumb, third, thumb, index. Wow, I think everybody took took my word saying I was going to do a short lesson today. We've only got 23 people here. <laughs> that's really, that's all right. This is a good place marker. Okay. And then the, the Giuliani, what I would call like the Giuliani or more classical version of the pattern, same exact pattern, except I'm grabbing thumb and third finger and then index middle thumb, third index middle. So straight on, let's see. Let me tilt this a little bit. So that's the Giuliani pattern. Here's the other one. I can definitely hear a difference between the two. Um, between the two sound, the sonically, the different patterns. Exactly the same pattern on paper, but execution is different so morning Baco good to see you but DK's here morning Jim let's see I gotta say hi to everybody Pepper's getting down there on her test I think she's almost to the end there so let's see um Kathy I know boss you're here Keith, saw you. Bob, hi, Bob. Good to see you, David, Jim, Bonnie. Bonnie and Jim are, are watching on different are on different devices. And David Sellers from Glasgow, Glasgow. I do. I'm definitely going. I uh, hope to go there someday soon. Although I don't know if my daughter is actually going to be moving to England now. This whole thing changed. Um, she got accepted by a ministry, and they were going to move her to Birmingham, I think, which is kind of crazy. Um, and we were, I was looking forward to it because she'd be there for a year. So I thought, oh, we'll go and visit her twice. <laughs> I mean, we'll visit. Oh, hey, air quotes. <laughs> visit her twice. <laughs> we're going to London. We're going to England. We're going. But I wanted to go up to Scotland, too. So I've been dying to get there. So Ed's here. Bruce is here. Uh, let's see. Who else is here? Hook is here. You guys, I think that's, I think everybody, Dave, okay, I already saw David, but okay, Dennis, Dennis is here, uh, Diane's here, uh-oh, she's going to want a story, I think I better have a story, uh, let's see, yeah, okay, I see everybody, uh, that's everybody, oh, DK, come in, came in late there, shame on you, DK, staying up till four in the morning to watch this or whatever time it is. Um, I think that's pretty much everybody. We, yeah. I wonder if I counted how many of the 23 who's not Obako's oh, on. That's right. Um, or Baco. Oh, Ray's here. 
and Art, Art Bloomer. Art, are you new? So are you new, Art? And Rick M. I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Oh, Kevin, Kevin's new. Kevin Elson one, Staffordshire in England. That sounds like a great place. I was I taught, was it yesterday, the day before I taught Cruz Beckham a guitar lesson? And they're at their <laughs> I looked up, I looked up the house. I think uh, you know, if the media is right about which houses it looks amazing. It's like, oh my gosh, it's such a crazy place. Um I would yeah, I would love to go to Scotland. It, it'll happen. It'll happen. Um so let's see. Oh yeah, somebody got a guitar. Ray got a guitar. Yeah, I love getting. I love. So Ray, you got. Oh, you opened the box. Yeah, that's so weird that it said don't open or or let it sit in the. I guess that makes sense, especially if it's been traveling. I know people used to. People would like when they were flying with guitars. People loosen their strings. I never did that. I told you about that one time though. They the one time they made me check my guitar and it was in a hard case. It was my Taylor. And I really wasn't happy about that. And then when I picked the guitar, and they did, and of course I waited at the carousel and the guitar never showed, all the luggage was gone and I was panicking because it never showed up. And of course, I didn't know because I'd never had to check my acoustic before. I was always able to carry it on, um, that they have a special place for that. And so that kind of freaked me out. And I went over there and I saw it just sitting there. Anyone could have gone over and picked it up. They didn't have anybody guarding it or anything. And so I opened up the case to make sure it was okay. And the G string was broken. And then I picked it up. I'm like, dang, the G string's broken. Why would, you know, why would that happen? And there was a dime inside of the guitar. And I'm like, who put a dime? So were they strumming my strings with a dime? And then they broke a string and said, oh, that must cost a dime. <laughs> yeah, they clearly have no idea. So, uh, but maybe with the transit, when the, when the box goes up in the air and they, you know, it gets really dry and comes back, you want it to kind of, chill out or something before i don't know like i said yesterday i open or day before i i when i get into the studio one of the first when i'm going to a studio which isn't very often uh, one of the first things i do is i open up all my guitar cases acoustic guitar cases and let the air and the humidity and the temperature of the room kind of surround them and get inside them so that when i pick them up that i tune them up and everything they stay in tune better um i feel like so i don't know that i need this on but um <laughs> So this, the chord I'm playing here is a is a is remember we I mentioned that this one, which is a G seven slash six, not over six, but add six. You could say G seven add six, but shorthand would be slash six. This one is the same chord, but A seven version. Um, so I'm playing five seven five six seven five, and I would call this A seven slash six it's close to a 13th that's true too rick um and really what i'm doing on this pattern is i'm going back and forth i, sh I need to do the let's see if i can do it's hard I'm used to going back and forth between the root and the seventh. So I'm not even playing the fifth string. So really you could play this chord this way. Five X, five, six, seven, five. And I'm using all three fingers. So I'm getting the top, I'm basically assigning a finger per string, but I'm not really, and then I'm hammering on the third. So if I take this off, that's a flat third and there's a third. So it's kind of a blues thing. Let me try it. What? What is mine?
like getting that fifth in there, but it's hard for some reason for me. Because I'm in autopilot. So when you get something so down, it's like all, it's muscle memory. It's hard to change it. You like seeing me struggle with stuff, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to church. I'm all cleaned up. <laughs> I'm actually wearing a button-up shirt. <laughs> I'm a little warm. I got my boots on, too. So, yeah, I got to go straight from here to, to film a couple services. And uh, it'll be fun because Alex is playing. My son is going to be playing, too. So hopefully we won't exceed 10 people on stage, but we'll all be six feet apart. And then we just film it, and then they, then they edit in the sermon and all that later. So it's pretty straight ahead. I won't say how long they, they I, I kind of heard a date, a possible go back date. Um, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to err on the side of caution. Um, our church is very, you know, we, they like to stay, they like to stay. Uh, we do a lot of things for the city. Like for example, we, we just put in new flooring in the two firehouses near our church. And we also bought a PA system for the police to, police station at our church. Uh, we've housed people in fires. Uh, we've been a storage facility. We donated all of our paper goods when COVID happened. Um, we all we had closets full of toilet paper and paper towels and everything. We donated those charities and we've been, our, we have, a, I guess we, I didn't know we had a sewing ministry, but there's a sewing ministry <laughs> and they've been making masks for uh, emergency workers. So our church gets the city really, it's funny because we, we allow anybody basically to have a meeting at the church, use the building, anybody from the city anyway, uh, no matter what the meeting's about. And uh, so they, you know, really try to be, uh, have an impact on the city and be, um, be, be valuable to the city. So I think that's good for any church to do. I think you want to. Yeah, it's kind of a cool chord though. But it's a it's a difficult chord. It's a bar and a four finger chord. In the E position, it would be this. Okay, that would be E. Uh, shoot, E seven slash six. Okay, and uh, the notes there are E. Oops, not B. E B D G sharp, C sharp, and E. And those are the the root, the fifth, uh, the flat seventh, the third, the sixth, and the root again. There's no, there is a fifth. What did, did I write the fifth? Yeah, root, fifth, flat seventh, third, sixth, root. Yeah. So those are the notes in the E7 version. Okay. And you could do this, take just E7 like this. Um, and, and if you can do that, so I'm going E7, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, to 0, 2, 0, 1, 3, 0, to 0, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0. But I'm doing, I'm, this is all happening, the movement's all happening um, on the second string. Exactly. Sesame Street. Oh, I'm going to get a copyright infringement. <laughs> How did you lose your channel? Oh, I, I played the Sesame Street theme, <laughs> which is just. It's just the blues. <laughs> they, they can't own that. Go. Oh, I typed. Uh, no, that's correct. I'm my point with the X is that I'm not plucking that when I was doing my pattern on it. I was skipping the fifth string, uh, Bob. So it is five X, but you still have your finger on it. You don't have to have your finger on it, but in case you accidentally hit that string, it's always good to have it there, any just in case. And you can't make it dead, really, not if you got a bar because. Your bar is either three fives right there. So you got three notes depending on the bar. So your bar is going to have to be pretty solid on that chord. 
Nah, I'm not muting it. I'm just, I'm, I was more referencing what we're, what's happening with the right hand than what's happening with the left hand. Uh, but so with this, if you can get this down, so you're playing the E7 chord with these two fingers, and that frees up the pinky and the third finger to do the little Sesame Street thing. <laughs> so if you do. You can, you can have some movement going on in your Travis pattern. I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of riffing. And that's, that's kind of the point. Um, the, uh, So E7 is going to play into what we're going to do tomorrow, which is, um, I, be, I think what we're well probably call the series. It'll be like learn the blues or play the blues or something, which will be fun. It'll be it'll be a lot of fun. It'll, <laughs> it'll be one of those things. Now here's here's why here's part of my thinking on this. This is one of these things you want to be able to do because I, I when this COVID thing is over and you can start jamming and hanging out and you can still jam at six feet apart with masks on. So feasibly, you can still be jamming. Um, in fact, Alex could show up at any moment now. And if he comes in here, I'll jam with him. In fact, oh, shoot. Yeah, he will be here today, but um, he won't be here tomorrow, I don't think. So, um, but that's when you get better so fast is when you're playing with other musicians. It's the same thing. Like I always use the example of tennis. When I play tennis with someone, particularly if I'm playing tennis with someone better than me, I'm going to get better. If I play... I'm not going to get worse. I may not play to the top of my game if I play with someone worse than me. Um, and I'm a very mediocre tennis player, but I do tend to play with people that aren't as good as I am. But anytime I've played with people that are better than me on tennis, um, I've my game is at a just naturally up. It's I don't know if it's competition or just I don't want to waste their time. <laughs> I think that's really what it is. I'm like, uh, in fact, I remember, Diane, this is kind of a story. <laughs> I play with this this artist named Jana Alira, and I don't know if any of you know who she is, but she's she does kids' concerts, Alira. And um, she does kid Christian concerts. And she was at Saddleback Church for years. Um, and uh, so I did. I played on all of her records. I played on a lot of – did a lot of shows with them. Yeah, this is kind of story time. <laughs> so – and, uh, you know, Ron, her husband, was her record producer. And I would go down to drive down to Orange County do, to play on the records. And um, and we would, you know, meet or go to different venues and, and play at camps and things like that. And he, we were always talking. He was always saying how we play tennis. And, oh, we got to play sometime. And he goes, yeah. And he said he was a tennis pro, like in high school and college. He was a pro. And he didn't mean like he was professional. He meant he taught. It was like a pro at a to help pay for his way through college in high school or paid his way through college down in Irvine. He was a tennis pro. And I went, Oh, okay, cool. You know, so, you know, I'm sure he's really good. I, and I'm thinking at this point in my life, I'm thinking of a pretty good tennis player. Right. So I say, Hey, we got to play sometime. And we keep, I keep putting it off because it means an hour drive just to go play tennis from Pasadena to Irvine. It was like, uh. finally I said, you know what? I need to play. Um, I, I need to play and it would be great to, to play with him. So I, I drove all the way down to Irvine and we get out there and we start, we start warming up and I can immediately tell he's a whole nother level. It's like, Oh my gosh, his shots are flat this far off the top of the net. Uh, they got lots of English on them, a lot of spin, a top spin back. And we just like, so we start playing and <laughs> if, so the first set, I think I served and I have this weird serve that I do. Um, I do like, it's, I don't know if I, I, I serve here. <laughs> I'm going to aim this up. I have this backspin or side spin, but I, I hit the ball like this. Most people will hit it this way and cause the spin to go like that. I, mine goes the other way. And so I was like, okay, I've got to try this right away. I got to use this weapon right away and i i didn't get my first one in so i did a little dinky shot and he killed it and, and then for the second serve and then i got the second serve 
my second, you know, it was love five. And I got the second, um, I got that second time I served, I got that spin it and he mishit it. And I won the point. We were 15 all, <laughs> but he was so good that it only took him one time to figure that out. And so from then on, if I tried that spin, he knew it was coming and, and he killed it. And then when it was his turn to serve, if he got the ball in, I couldn't even get to it. It was just like, if the ball was in, cause he was hitting the corners and I could, I couldn't even get my racket on it. It was so fast and so over there. And then if he missed it, his second serve would be a lot slower. So I had a chance, but it had so much English on it. I would hit it and it would literally go <laughs> shooting off to my right. And I couldn't, it would go over to the next court. I like, I couldn't even get it across the net. So I lost 6060. And I, I just spent the entire time. I felt so bad. It was like, I'm wait, at least I drove to him. He didn't drive all the way to Pasadena. I spent the whole time just trying to make him laugh so that he would have some fun. It was, it was pretty pathetic. I mean, oh, my gosh. I realized at that moment, okay, I'm not a very good tennis player. You know, you think you are because you play with people that are worse than you. Um, and this is what's so good about jamming with others, though. It's like, as is, is bad as I played, and, and, and in that scenario, there was nothing I could really do. Um, if you're, if you're going to, you know, if you're a beginner and you sit down and you jam with me, I, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not going to get anything out of it and you may get something out of it, but it's not, it's not like your game is going to go up that much. But if you play with someone who's a little bit better than you, um, you're going to, you're going to learn. And what I, I suggest is you bring something new to the table, you know, uh, maybe bring a new chord or a new lick or something. And, and maybe, and also often what happens is like, you'll play, you'll be jamming. And one of you will do something. You'll, the other one will go, wait, 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 what did you just do? <laughs> you go like, can, show me that. Show me what you just did there. And sometimes it's like, okay, here it is. And other times you're like, I, I don't know what I did. And that's actually a good thing. If you don't know what you did, that just means your instincts are right. Um, and that you're starting to get all of that information, the scales um, and the chords and what's coming up next. Because blues is a big part of blues is setting up that next chord um, for you know a lot of I'll give you an example, like a bass player thing. You know what chord is coming because the bass player just set it up. Um, and so a good bass player can can set up a song and everyone knows where it's going. It's, I did a gig uh, back in the day when I was just trying to hustle up work. Um, I joined this, I think it was called Musician Referral Service for a year. It was like $200. It was a big gamble. It ended up, oh, I, I've got a story on this one too. <laughs> I forgot about musician referral service. I'm shocked that I remembered the name of it because this would have been before we had kids and Alex is 28, almost 28. So, um, oh, from Rick, sorry, missed the Rick question. Uh, Rick, I have meant to ask you, did any, did, uh, did you do any guitar on Seventh Heaven? No, I did not. Uh, was that, uh, was that Seventh Heaven was, was that um, shoot? What's his name? Oh, I'm friends with him. He's got a funny name. He he did his first TV show. He did was Wonder Years, and it was all acoustic. And he actually played the theme on that on a borrowed acoustic because he didn't have an acoustic. He was like a a rock guy, and he didn't have an acoustic guitar. Um, so he he borrowed that. Um, but. Um, Oh, nice. You play in Allison's restaurant. Too. Nice. Um, so anyway, the, now I got a so I squirrel. <laughs> Total, I just got squirreled. Uh, it was a verb now. Um, but when, when you get to the point where you're starting to, to, to get all those chords and the ideas and licks and things like that. And it becomes a little bit more natural and more second nature. That's when stuff will happen that you don't. It's, it's not so much about knowing scales. It's about knowing the music. Um, oh, I was talking about the um, uh, bass player setting up. Okay. So, oh, the, the musician's referral thing. So, ba um, so I, I called, I got this, there was one gig I called about and they they'd already gotten a guitar player said, but they had another gig that they they said, if you don't mind driving to Palm Springs, it's a it's, and it was, it was like uh I think it was fifty dollars to drive to Palm Springs, you know. Again, this would have been in the early 90s, so it might have been worth it, but it was for a country gig. Oh, and I they said, Oh, you you'll know these songs, they're all the, the standards, you know. And I'm like, 
no, I don't know any country standards, you know. And but I went out and did it, and they said, "Don't worry about it. Just, 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 you know, just wing it." You know, they didn't have book, they didn't have charts. You know, now country songs, you know, could be four, three songs or four. I mean, three chords or four chords. Very, very simple. But you don't know what order the chords are in. <laughs> That's not so simple. But the bass player, man, he was so good and so cool. He was like, "Just follow me." And I'm like. What do you mean? He just he goes, just, he just kind of gave me a wink and just follow me. I was a pretty young guitar player at that point. Never done anything country. And so I'm playing electric guitar and he'd be like. <laughs> you know, I mean, I knew exactly where he was going. You know, whatever, any chord that we anytime it changed chords, he led to it in such a stereotypical way that I was like, oh, D. Hey, you know, I knew everything that was coming. He was really good at setting it up. And so that was that was pretty cool. That was kind of eye-opening to me how important a bass player is to a gig and how he can really direct everybody if he has to. Um, so uh, I know that Sting did that, but there was another, I got another call from Musicians Referral Service that, that could be a story uh, that, that I think will meet our Diane. Yeah, all of my all of my meeting celebrity stories are always me not knowing who the heck they are. <laughs> See, Kathy would have known Giovanni Ribisi. Okay, so we got. See, we have a question here. Um, that is somehow when people encourage me, I tend to get better more easily. But when people tell me I can't do a certain thing, I I'm more determined. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> I think that's like the thing about like sometimes the the most achieved people in the world have really unloving parents that never gave them any encouragement. And the parents that are like, Oh, Johnny is the best. You know, you, you see like, Oh, she is the best or Susie's the best or Johnny's the best at this and that. And it's like, no, they're not. They're awful. And you, you know, what you see that is on, on the first like couple of weeks of American Idol where you get these awful, awful singers there that are convinced because all their friends and particularly their family told them they were great singers and they get in there and they're just awful. And it's a funny because there's the people that whose parents were either really, really stingy with, with, uh, with compliments or encouraging words are the ones that usually strive in life very unhappily. I mean, people can be very happy and horrible at what they do. <laughs> people can be very good at what they do and be very miserable. So I, you know, I kind of fall in the middle camp, I think, in some ways. I, my, actually, my motivation in that regard was often just because I wanted to be popular in school and I wasn't. So it's kind of like, I'll show them. I'll work with Justin Bieber. Hey, I said it. It's, it's a, they're saying that's a sip. I disagree, but let's take a sip. I'll show them. I'll play guitar on Apex Legend. Cheers. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody tells me I can't, um, I just like, oh, you're probably right. <laughs> no, if that were the case, I would never have moved to L.A. So that was one of those classic examples of doing, you know, going against what everyone else said you know, to do. Go to college, get a degree, teach school, you know, whatever. But I was like, nope, I'm going to going to pursue this other path. that's weird and nobody's done. So um that's funny, you guys. Are, that's, uh, yeah, I, so, so, uh, Kathy, the story I was going to tell was that when I was doing this musician's referral service, um, your phone number's in there, and I get a call from this person, this lady, and um, she said, because one of the things I said in the, in there, which was unique, was I said I played guitar, but I also said I write because I did. I had a band. Um, I um, I think at that time I was married. My wife and I had a band, so I had a lot of songs. And I, you know, so as a songwriter, I was writing the top line and the everything. I was writing everything back then. And so that actually, I didn't, you know, that didn't really generate any calls except this one lady called me, and they were looking for some new songs for. They want to do another. They want to do a record. And I said, Oh, what's the name of your band? And she said, Billion. And I went. Billion. Okay, I've never heard. And she she was kind of going on like, 
um, she was kind of going on like, uh, like I should have known who she was. And I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, so yeah, I can send you a tape of it. You have an address. And she goes, yeah, we have a PO box. Huh? Okay, cool. So I put together a really bad cassette tape of really pretty me- mediocre songs and, uh, and sent them to her, but before, but only because I realized about five, you know, five minutes into the conversation, she was Terry Nunn from Berlin. <laughs> and I was talking to the whole time I was talking to Terry Nunn and she was asking me to write songs for her band. And I'm like, Bill- Berlin. I thought she said billion um, and uh, stupid landlines. So I sent the songs in and never heard anything from it. I should, I should make sure I, I should listen to the records and make sure that it wasn't, well, I forget the name of the group that she said they were kind of the sound they were going for on the new record. And I don't remember who it was more, it was more ethereal kind of because it was 90s. So it was, I think Cranberries maybe. She was like, we we're kind of going for a Cranberry sound. And I don't think I had anything that sounded like Cranberries. So, well, and I think you guys are going to have to sip on your own because I'm going to have to take off here. Um, but tomorrow we're going to start. Tomorrow we're going to start. Um, we're going to start working on some blues, some basic blues stuff. Okay. And that way we can. So probably what's going to happen is I'm going to. Oh, okay. I'll change guitars so you guys can. Well, look what guitar I have right here not plugged in but the little harmony bobcat great little guitar i used it on a ccr i just did a a fortunate sun knockoff yesterday where i actually copied the song as close as i could i didn't leave the room um um and that was intentional it was for it's for a new um cartoon that's coming out i think uh john goodman and woody harrelson are in it and it's about about a couple hippies from the 60s that get um transplanted to the current age like through through some kind of time machine so it's about their relationship so you can take a sip now because i changed guitars uh So what I what it might end up being once I once we get the blues down we're gonna, it's we're just going to shed it and then the other thing is I'll show you a scale that we can practice together and then probably what I'll do is I'll just sit here and play blues for you so you can play along with it okay and oh man I really need to maybe I really need to get this OBS down because I wouldn't mind having like over here the chord progression so you don't have to um, you know although I can write it out and scan it it's super easy uh, but if I put it here uh, it'll disappear really fast. Um, but it's only going to be three chords, but it, the, the main thing is to keep track of the chords. Do not lose uh, track of where you are in the progression. And the, re- the re- main reason is, and we're going to talk about this tomorrow, the main reason I'll reiterate it um, is because you want to be able to jam with people. And if you are unpredictable, if you do a 10 bar blues one time around and 12 bars the next time and 11 bars the next time and 13 bars the next time, no one's going to want to jam with you. Uh, I've, I've jammed with people. I've been that guy when I was a kid, I would play it. I play it wrong. And the guy trying to solo was like, where are you? You know? So you really, it's, it's really, really important for you to get the, uh, the pattern of a blues progression, a basic blues progression, just so ingrained in your head that you can play it without faltering 12 bars every time, a thousand times in a row, no problem. And then the other reason you do that, not only so that you don't discourage people that are trying to jam with you, but then when you're playing, you can have that progression in your head so you know what chord's coming up next so you can set it up like a good bass player. You're not be playing bass, but on guitar, you set it up as well.
And then also, you know, we can we could maybe talk a little bit about finger style thing. I'm not that's not my thing. I'll tell you who's really good at that is RJ uh, Ranquillo. He's really good at the blues thing and also really good at the the. Um, but what I'm going to show you is just some super basic stuff so you can get started and just be jamming with other people. And then I'll show you some tricks too and some cheater not cheater things, but just some some inside notes that are like, oh, that's a cool note. You can you, you know. We may even sit, do, uh, you know, we'll talk about it, but um, I'll just kind of wing it as we go. <laughs> anyway, what else do I do? That's pretty much what I do. So, so tomorrow, that's what we're going to start. Okay. Um, 11 o'clock Pacific time. That would be 12, uh, two o'clock on the East coast and uh, seven o'clock in London. So eating an early dinner and we can hang out. Um, and then, um, Oh, sorry. Oh, True Blue. Hey, how's it going? You're new. Um, so let me see. Moo Moo, Moo Goo Moo Goo. You're here. Working like a dog. That's good. At least you got a job. That's awesome. Uh, everybody's, I think everybody's ready to go back to work. Maybe some people are enjoying this. Oh, thanks, Bob. Yeah, hit like if you can. Gabriela Quevedo. Who's that hook? Are you answering a question up here? Hook, 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 hook. Oh, True Blue, you're retired. Okay, so you don't <laughs> you don't want to get back to work. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I don't think I'm ever going to retire. I just bought a house. How am I going to retire? I don't want to retire though. Oh, oh, okay. I'll check. I'll check her out. I okay. You guys have been talking about that. I'll check her out. I'm assuming that's a girl. Uh, there's so many. I can't, you know, it's like it's not my thing to be honest. I mean, figure picking. I do a lot of figure picking in records and movies and TV and stuff like that, but solo records things like that that's a different that's a different thing so anyway old man zen you're new too yeah you're well and and old man you're uh, uh zen you're gonna uh you've got i think 41 lessons you can catch up on so on an average of like an hour and 45 minutes you've probably got about you know 75 hours of stuff you can go through if you want uh yes and i've got a this is a short day but I, i'm just trying to keep my energy up for the rest of the day because i got a full day okay Stormy Monday is a great song. Um, I may show us that that progression we may get to, but that'll take a little while because it's, but that's a great song. And I love what he does on rhythm guitar on that. So good. Um, so I may reference that, but that we'll have to get into bar chords for that. So David, that might be a, uh, I, that might be a tough one to do. And plus I, I got to be careful that I'm not, I don't think Stormy Monday is going to be, um, uh, going to be, uh, you know, anything I do blues wise can't really be copyrighted because it's all the same. You know, it's all the same progression. So, wow. She's got, okay, I'll check it out. Probably because she's cute too. <laughs> so, uh, all right. God bless you guys. I will talk to you later. See you tomorrow.